The Fountain Day 75, Full Bloom. The other day while having an intense moment during quiet time, I saw myself and my body was covered in a variety of colored flowers. Every inch of me was covered with full blooming flowers. And I heard you are in full bloom. Today, almost a week later, I saw that same vision but this time, one at a time, flowers were being picked off of me by others. And when they plucked one, a new flower would bloom on me immediately to fill the space left behind. I love everything about this extended vision. I've come into a blooming season. I've been brought out of a season of shadowy winter and being aligned in the wrong places into an eternal spring a time where the light of life is shining all over me. I'm just now being reminded that months ago, immediately after making some alignment decisions, I saw someone who had been casting a dark shadow over me and that shadow was preventing the light of God from reaching me. Their cloudy covering was in the way. As I prayed and broke those ties, I saw God's light coming back to rest on me without hindrance. And from that moment until now, I have felt his goodness again. I had wondered why things had been so challenging and hazy. And in that vision, it was all made clear. Oh, the goodness of God. He won't allow us to stay in bondage to others. He will reveal, remove, and reorder because he loves us. Do you want to be in full bloom? I'm sure you do. If so, now is a great time to take a moment and ask if you're aligned under someone who is casting a shadow over you. A shadow that stands to obstruct your alignment with God. Every alignment in your life is important. As a worship leader, I always tell people, my job when I lead worship is not to be seen and praised by the congregation. No, I'm like a tour guide and I take the room to the presence of God and then I step aside and I say, look, there he is. I'm to direct attention to God. Many worship leaders and pastors get stuck in self-love. They love the attention and the praise of the congregation, which is very dangerous, as we clearly saw with the devil. He too was leading worship until he wanted the glory to be directed to him. We must guard against wrong alignments like that. It's extremely important who we sit under who we allow to lead us in worship, teaching, even in our work. God desires to set our lives into alignments that allow his glory to shine over us. Yes, at work, we must sometimes work under those who aren't godly, but in those times, we must be on our face asking God to allow his light to shine through the darkness and seeking his wisdom to keep ourselves separate, even when in the same office, to supersede the shadow cast by an unbeliever and for his light to radiate within us, therefore transforming the environment. It can be done. It's not easy, but it can be done. In church, we do have a choice about what leadership we fall under. So it is our responsibility to meet with God and ask where he wants us to plug in and to remain willing to be moved. If that leadership becomes unhealthy for us, or becomes out of season for our lives. Ultimately, we are responsible for listening and following God to remain in the full light of his glory and favor. Even in the darkest place, his glory can be found by those who seek him. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Psalm 27, eight. The godly are directed by honesty the wicked fall beneath the load of their sin. The godliness of good people rescues them. The ambition of treacherous people traps them. Proverbs 11, 5, and 6. Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. Proverbs 11, verses 2 and 3.